up, folks? C Gang. Welcome to another episode of my boy Cooking with Comedian Michael Allen. Folks, C Gang, yeah. That's cooking, comedy, cussing, and cocktails. Hey, before y'all get to it, make sure y'all check me out on my YouTube. Who the hell is John? That's W H O. The hell is John? I upload videos every week. Hey, Mike, you know what they say, man. You put a seashell up to your ear, you can hit the ocean. But I got this big old pot, man. I think I hear you winning. So show me what to do with some laughter and some cooking, all right? Good morning, good morning, good morning. What time is it, y'all? Let me make sure I'm saying the right thing. Well, good afternoon. It's 1239 today. But welcome, my 4C gang for life. Cooking, comedy, cussing, and cocktail. 4C gang. I'm glad you're still alive today. I'm glad God put breath in our body. But guess what? Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Comedian Michael Allen. But we do what? Cooking, comedy, cussing, damn it, and cocktail. My cocktail today is some good old milk because I got breakfast. Y'all know what? I made spaghetti and fried chicken last night. Y'all saw the video. I showed you how to cook it. So you know what I said. Why not have chicken? I wanted chicken and waffles. I can't find my waffle machine. So I have chicken and pancakes. Oh my God. Look at that. The chicken and pancakes. Look at that chicken and pancakes, y'all. I got an egg over medium. I don't know if you can see it. And of course, y'all, I got me some grits that I'm gonna have to do with extra butter and extra sugar, baby. I got my butter on there, so let me put my sugar on there. Y'all know, don't judge me. Judge your motherfucking self. Yes, I like a lot of sugar. Uh, hence, sugar in my tank. Yeah, I got a little sugar in my tank, but it's equal, equal enough to whoop somebody's ass. How y'all doing today? Look. Is this y'all first time here on this channel on Cooking with Comedian Michael Allen? Well, look, I need to do a disclaimer right quick. Get this right on out the damn way. Look, if you got any bitch asses in you, if you a little timid on the inside, if you kind of weak, if your feelings get hurt real, real easy, or you be like, oh, I can't believe they said that to me. Or you had some shit that happened in your childhood that just got you traumatized and you a little timid. You got low self-esteem. You know what? This ain't the motherfucking channel for you. I'm just going to put it like that. Because, see, I talk hard and I talk real. And, and I'm liable to talk about some shit that might hit close to home. That's going to rub you the kind, kind of the wrong way. That's going to make you get all into your feelings. See, if you get into your feelings, this ain't the damn channel for you. Because I say what I feel and I feel what I fucking say. Hell, people say shit all the time that I could apply to my life. But you know what? I let that shit go. I let it roll right off the fuck off the bat. Because I know how I feel about my goddamn self. So I'm just saying. If all of that bothers you or if you tend to be any of those little things, this ain't the channel for you. You might want to go over to a PG channel. Because this ain't no PG channel. We cussing. We drinking. We talking shit on this damn channel. Okay, with all that being said, if you feel like you my type, if you feel like you can be a 4C gang member, then welcome to another episode of Cook with Comedian Michael Allen. And we love you. But we don't love you more than we love our motherfucking selves. Come what? Don't judge me. Judge your damn self. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever the hell it is. I'm just glad. You know what I, I put on Facebook today? I said, today is a much better day than yesterday. Because I'm alive. Ha <laughs> ha. Woo. People complain. They don't complain. You alive. You woke up. All right, y'all. With all that being said, I now need to thank my heavenly father above for life in this meal. Dear Father God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. I thank you for life. I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you that my parents are still here. You know, I can't go without thanking you for letting me have my mom and my daddy. Thank you for them. I thank you for them. The ups, the downs, the lows, the highs, everything I've been through with them, the good and the bad, I thank you for them. I thank you. I thank you that you've given me the chance to realize how blessed and special it is for me to still have them, Father God. I thank you for this wonderful food that I'm about to receive, Father God, in your son, Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Woo! See, when I, I pray, you know what? Make me want to, y'all know what? I'm going to let y'all hear a phone call to my mama and see how, oh, she going to be mad. Oh, she, 
Well, well, you know what? I may not, because I don't know what she's going to say. I better talk to her when we are. Oh, my God. If I was to call my mom right now, and y'all hear her, oh, cuss me out. Um, Maybe that'll be a little later, because I don't know what's alive. See, my mama like me. And I, yes, I'm transparent, but not with her. Baby, she will, what, bitch? I mean, that's just how she talks to so. me. Um, and then she would get mad because I would have... Anyway. All right. With that being said, I got some honey. Oh, I want syrup. Do I want honey? I want syrup. So the whole key to when you eat pancakes and chicken is that you put syrup over all of it. You hear me? But I really want on my pancakes. Yeah. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Why do I want some milk first? Mm. Y'all had to go buy me a new... You know what? Normally, I'm able to go through a whole carton of milk by myself. But this time, my my gallon of milk, I looked, it was poor. Either though, it must not have been good for me. But I look at the date. See, that piss... Oh, that piss make me want to go up there and kick some ass. Whoever the motherfucking dairy and produce. I'm going to kick your ass, dairy produce section. Okay. All right. I got butter already on my pancake. Y'all know this chicken was slamming last night. Oh. The chicken. I'm going y'all in. I dream. Or did I dream? All I know is I thought about this damn chicken the whole time I was sleeping. Yes, I do. Mm. So, mm. so, you know I'm chicken good. When it's still slamming the next damn morning, what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Y'all said the chicken last night, but I'm gonna just say it again. Oh. I ain't just now. Hell, I'm tired. I ain't tired. Well, I'm into this chicken. Let me try to do a thumbnail. Always camera ready. Okay. Hold on. Maybe if I get a pancake up here. Oh, this chicken. Ah. Do we make faces? You know, the only reason I do them faces is because I see other people do the damn face. You know, I'm going to stop doing them faces. I'm going to smile and look cute. I'm going to smile and give my all. Mm. You know what? I love, I love life. I love waking up in the morning. No matter how hard that day may be. But ain't nothing harder than not waking up at all. Mm. Let's talk about death. You know. Oh, hell, let's talk about life right now. Mm. Cause this is giving me damn life. See, I'm gonna tell you how old I was when I first figured out what death was. My grandmother. Now, my mother's the only child, right? So, I don't have any uncles from her. So I have a grand-uncle. I have grand-uncles. That's my grandmother brother. Now, mm, hold on. I'm eating too fast. See, that one shit so good. 
Who I'm swallowing too damn fast. And I'm a good swallower. I ain't never had no problem swallowing. Oh, <laughs> you want somebody to swallow? Call Mike. No, I'm just, I'm just, don't judge me. Judge your motherfucking self. <laughs> Call Michael, he's a swallower. Mm. <coughs> oh, that was too funny. So anyway, look, I have to give you the gist of the story. I'm trying to tell y'all when the first time I realized what death was. Because, you know, as kids, we don't know what death is. And I hadn't been in no funeral or anything. This was like in 76, 77. Damn, I just made myself seem old. Oh, this is good. He's grip. So anyway, my mother doesn't have any brothers or sisters. She's the only child. So my grandmother, her brothers and sisters, were, they were my aunts and uncles. And considering... My grandmother was 38 when I was born, so she was really young enough to be my mother. And she was 33 when my oldest sister was born. See, the women in my family, they had the kids young. I don't know, you know, it stopped with my oldest sister. I think she waited until she was 23, and I still think that's young. But my great-grandmother had my mother, and my grandmother when she was 16. And my grandmother had my mother when she was 18. And my mother had my sister when she was 15. And, you know, so I'm just saying. So I kind of was old enough to remember my grandmother's sisters and brother because, hell, they could have been my just uncle, not grand, even though they were my grand uncles. Well, my one uncle, John Raphael Benz, but we called him Uncle Ray. I remember him slightly. I remember going to his funeral. I remember he was the nicest looking one out of all of them. Oh, my Uncle Ray was... You know what? My I, I'm like a dark-skinned version of my Uncle Ray because we both look good. My Uncle Ray was gorgeous like me. I wonder, if he, was he really my daddy? Because he looked good like I did. But he was light-skinned with good hair and I'm brown-skinned with no hair. <laughs> okay. So... But he and I both had to have our appendix removed. That's one thing I know about. Anyway, my Uncle Ray, shout out to my cousin Bruce and my cousin Sherry. That's his two kids. Well, anyway, he died because his appendix bust. Right? And um, all I knew was we was getting my great-grandmama's house together. And I, I didn't know what for, really. And my mama was kind of say Uncle Ray died. And I did not know what death meant. So, when we went to go to the view of the body at the front of the home, and mind you, this is 1976, 77. So I had to be about eight, nine. And I remember my uncle landing this this thing. I'm thinking he's just sweet. I'm, you know, <clears throat> I think parents need to explain death to their children a little more because I had no idea what death was. And I remember walking up to the casket with my mama now. And anyway, I sit down, but my great-grandmother, she goes up there and I see her standing at the casket and I stand next to her and she's, she's crying. Look, this is her. And she outlived all her children. Ain't that something? That was the first one to pass away. But anyway, I'm looking up at my great-grandmama. And she is just crying. And, and I'll never forget, I rubbed her and said, it's going to be all right. Because I heard other people saying that. Oh, I said, Graham, this is going to be all right. And that just, she said, oh, my God, can you believe my baby told me if it's going to be, that's going to be, it's going to be all right. I was just saying what I heard other people say. But. So I still didn't figure out that I, death was, that was death. This is how I knew what death was. I was, we got up to go to the funeral that morning. And we got there. And I say, oh, it's a lot of people here. And it look all sad and somber and the music. And then I looked at my grandmama. Now, mind you, this is her brother. 
my grandfather, I mean, my grandmother was screaming and hollering. I mean, oh my God, I get teary out just thinking about how she cried. And I go, oh, this ain't a good thing. I will never forget to see, I've never seen my grandmama cry and, and holler like that one. I said, oh, this must not be a good thing. A car, quite a few people crying. So, at that moment, I swear, and this is a true story, y'all. Y'all know I don't tell nothing but the truth. At that moment, I said, Lord, whatever this is, see, I've always talked to God. Come on, somebody. I always talk to God because in church, this old white lady, I used to go, I wanted to be adult so bad, I always did what all adults did, right? And I would go when church was over and everybody was in the basement having donuts and all that. First of all, I was nosy. I would always go back up in the church and when I was Catholic. And I would go at the altar. And I would get down on my knees and act like I was praying so somebody would come by and say, oh, that young man got nothing but God in him. Look, at he's up here praying. You know what? I was always a ham. I like attention. I don't know what that is. Well, I just, that was just a revelation to me. I would literally go back up there and wait on somebody to come see me and, you know. But sometimes I would really pray. And I remember the old white lady coming by and she said, young man. I look, she said, that's a beautiful thing you're praying. She said, but when you pray, you mean it. She said, because I'm going to tell you this. She said, God is a forgiving God. She said, what you do is you get down there and you tell God to forgive you of your sins. She said, one good thing about God, baby, she said, when you ask God for forgiveness of something you did, she said, you can go and come back five minutes later and ask God, do you remember what I did? He, she said, he won't even remember the sin that you asked for forgiveness for. She said, because he done threw it into the sea of forgetfulness. Come on. What was that like? Um, Gert. Her name was Gertie. Gertie was her name. Oh, she gone by now. I remember. Thank you, Gertie, for that. Because that's why I have the relationship I do with God because of Gertie and me starting off playing. But anyway, to go back, that's when I said to God, look, this death stuff, I want no part of it. I don't want any part of this death stuff, Jesus, please. Come on. You a miracle worker. You a way maker. I don't want no more of this death stuff. I don't like it. I don't want it at my front door. I don't want it. And, you know, time went on. And I knew other people to die. I remember I was volunteering in the soup kitchen and the one girl. And so this is why we got to be careful what we say, too. I used to volunteer in the church. I volunteered in a soup kitchen at the church for years. I really did. And, um... The one girl, the two girls, they went to school. I mean, went to church with us. And one of the aunties worked with us. And one of the aunties' sister, boyfriend, y'all got to stay with me here. Stay with me. The lady, her boyfriend hit the lottery. And for a nice bit of money. And they interviewed him on the news. And asked him, what was he going to do with the money? And we was happy. It was a person from the hood, you know. Do y'all know? That's why I, if I had to lie, I ain't going on no news or nothing. But anyway, do y'all know that some men kidnapped the girlfriend, the auntie, trying to hold her for hostage to get some of the money from the boyfriend? And they had her in this house, abandoned house. And the, po the police weren't even coming from her. The police just happened to be driving down the street. And they shot and killed her. Shot and killed that woman. Who had nothing to do with it. He probably wasn't even going to give her no damn money. I don't know. But anyway. And I remember telling the girl who, it was her mama. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I said, I don't know what I would do if, if something happened if, to my mama or grandma. Was something to that effect I said that. Oh, I said, I'm glad ain't nobody died that close to me. The only other, after my uncle in 76, in 1984, 
my great grandfather had a heart attack and died. But he never really talked too much and who, you know, he was old. And I loved him, but it really didn't affect me, affect me like that. Shout out to my great grandfather, Doc Dixon. I loved him. So don't think I didn't, but I'm just saying it didn't affect me. I'm only speaking my truth. That was in 84. But the moment that I said, oh, I'm so glad ain't nobody died that's close to me. Baby, oh, hell broke loose in my life. Do you hear me? Then my grandmother, Jesus, just like that in 87, she passed. Oh, that was a hard one. That one, I couldn't even, I couldn't get it. I could not handle that one. Uh-uh. And then, I was still reeling for that in 87. And then my great, I mean, my uncle, my favorite uncle, my uncle Leslie, my favorite uncle on my mama's side, because my uncle Doc is my favorite uncle on my daddy's side. But anyway, then my uncle Leslie died in 89. So now here's my great grandmother burying three of her four children. And I'm like, oh God, Jesus, now this is too much. Then in 92, 92 or 93, my her my my Aunt Teresa dies. That's my great grandma's last. She buried all four of her children. Anyway, she dies, and I'm like, wow. Then in 96, my cousin died, who's like my brother. So you know what? I said, Lord, because I told you back then, I even asked, Lord, please come up with something that will make me live forever by the time I get grown. I really want to live forever. But, not once, when all those people was passing away, did I say, oh, what was me? I said, you know what? I love them, Jesus, but thank you for my life. Thank you that I'm still here. Thank you. And I'm still here because there's something left for me to do. I'm trying to figure it out. Maybe it's to put a smile on people's face, make them laugh. But you know what? I don't ever want to die. And people, you know, people kill me. I ain't scared to die. You know, when my time come, it comes. Stop that shit. You know what? Um, what's going to happen? Go happen, though. I'm praying to you, God, that it don't happen. I'm praying, Lord, let me live. Y'all know what? Anybody that know me, I always say, I'm going to live to 126, but I want to be older than that. I want them to interview me in Detroit and say, I'm on the news and they're saying to me, this is the longest living Michigan citizen ever. The oldest. Michigan citizen living ever. And I want them to ask me what is the keys to longevity and living a long, healthy life, an unheard of age. And I'm going to go, good sex, good dick, I mean, a good drink. <laughs> See, if I keep talking like that, God ain't going to let me live. But no, I do want to live for a long, I want to live forever. I hope they come up with something. And then people are like, well, you know, you go to heaven and you live forever. I understand that. I love the Lord. And I think when I see everybody that's gone on before me, but my thing is there. If that's eternity, they're going to be there forever, right? So I ain't in no rush because I know you're going to be there. And I, when I get there, I'll see you. I want to live as long as they did back in the Bible days, like eight, nine hundred years old. They were living that damn long. My mother goes, when I, 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 if I get to the point where I can't take care of myself, I'm just, just take me. I'm ready to go. Oh, hell the fuck, that not me. I would look at it as if they just waiting on me head and foot. If I can't wipe my own ass and somebody got to do it, I'm going to enjoy them. I'm going to got my legs wide open. Go ahead and wipe it. Touch it, baby. Go ahead and touch it. Yeah. People are like, I don't, if I can't do for my, no, I will lay my ass right there. If you got to feed me, feed me. <laughs> what? If you got to hold my penis and point it towards the cup, touch it, baby, because I'm going to enjoy every motherfucking moment of it. Ah. And just like 
allowed to look at my mother's another one. That's why she won't let me handle nothing with my mom won't let me handle anything. Because she said if they put her on a machine, don't put her on a machine, just let her go. See, I don't believe in that. Put me on the motherfucking machine. Put me on that damn machine. People can help me to my um we're going to just let, you know, God, nature take its course, let God, whatever God wants to happen, happen. My point is this, if God wanted you, God would take you while you're on that machine. You ain't got to take me off that machine to know what God wants. If God wanted me, he going to take my ass whether I'm on that machine or not. So leave me on the machine, shit. And I don't ever think that the person who met him was on the beneficiary, beneficiary of the insurance policy, whoever the beneficiary of the insurance policy should not have... Any say so on whether you stay on that machine or not. Because if they take you off that machine, then they get all they get your money. And you my beneficiary, you ain't finna tell uh uh. That's that decision ain't that damn hard, is it? I'ma put it like this. Come on, somebody. Don't love nobody more than you love your motherfucking self. Remember that and don't judge me. Judge your damn self. If you got $50,000 or $100,000. If I got a $100,000 insurance policy and you the beneficiary, mama, sister, brother, who, else, who the fuck ever, and you the beneficiary, put yourself in the out because I have to put myself in that situation. And somebody come up to me and be like, look, <laughs> I'm not saying I do it, but I'm not thinking about it. Look, we need, you know, take them off the machine. That would make some people be quicker to say, yeah, you know, un unplug the machine and let's see what happens. Basically, basically they say, unplug the machine, let's see if I get this money or not. $100,000 will make you get through some people's death. I'm serious. <laughs> That's why I always, I have it in mind. They said, if you die, do I resuscitate you? Yeah, Brie, you better pump the, pump everything on my Pump my mouth, pump my heart, pump my booty. If you pump me in the booty if you have to. That might bring me back to life. Pump me in my ass and see if I wake up. <laughs> I got it. I just say, pump my chest, pump my chest, pump my... Pump me in the ass if you have to. See if that brings me back. Shit. What? Do not judge me. Judge your damn self. <laughs> Say pump me in the ass. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love life. And all that it entails. Oh, I've had some bad days. <laughs> then I've had some hills to climb. <laughs> but as I look back. Having that song though. My good days outweigh my bad days. Come on, somebody. And I love life. I love living. Don't ever give up. Don't give in. Always know that you'll get over it. You'll get through it. It will pass. It will. Oh, I got some stories to tell you. And I look back and say, Thank what but God, nobody but Jesus. Mm. I love life. Love it. Love life. I love life when I got money. I love life when I ain't got no money. I love life when I'm happy. I love life when I'm sad. I love life when I'm single. I love life when I'm in a relationship. I love life when I'm driving. I love life when I ain't got no car. I love life when I'm got my own place. And I love life when I'm living with somebody. I love life. Period. COVID ain't did shit differently for me. Because I love myself through COVID, baby. I love life when I'm speaking to somebody. And I love life when I ain't speaking to somebody. Come on. I love life when I fight shit. I love life when I ain't fighting. Come on. I love life all the time. I ain't never said I wish I wasn't living or I wish I wasn't here. And this is nothing against nobody that have thought about giving up. I've never even thought about it. 
And I've been through some shit. But number one, I'm too damn nosy. I want to always know what's going to happen. And there's just some people I'm determined to outlive. Have you ever had somebody like that? You're like, I will not let this bitch outlive me. Duh-uh. Lord, this bitch will not outlive me. Not today. Not this lifetime, bitch. You better wait till next. Do we reincarnate it? Bitch, you will not outlive me in this motherfucking life. Because I it's some shit I want to say at your motherfucking funeral. Uh-uh. It's some shit I got to get off my chest, and it only going to work at your funeral. And if I'm dead, then I can't say that shit at your funeral. Why? Don't judge me. <laughs> Don't judge your damn self. Just like I said to some people, like, oh, my God, I can't believe you say that. I love my siblings to death. But I'm determined to outlive. I hope, I wish we all could live forever, but I think only I'm going to live forever. I'll be the miracle. But I don't want half of their they husband's name in my obituary. One for sure. And, you know, I got some shit I want to say at their funeral. <laughs> oh, let me stop. You know, that hurts me to even know that one day they won't be here. So I'm playing when it comes to my sister. But I am going to outlive them all. But I, I'm determined that. Okay, it is what it is. See, people don't want to be transparent and tell their damn truth. Who wants to die before their siblings? Not me. Shit. Somebody need to help my mama through it. Did I just say my mama going to outlive my siblings? I hope she, I, Oh, jeez. Okay, this is going totally left right here. I love my siblings. Uh... You know people got problems when they start calling them siblings. <laughs> they don't say sister or brother. You know, you're not, that's my sibling. <laughs> I love my sibling. Okay, you guys, thank you all for joining me again and let me rat and rave and just talk shit. You know, every time I do a video, there's a backlash from somebody. Somebody ain't motherfucking happy. Somebody upset about something I said, but you know who ain't upset? Me. And that's all the fuck that matters. Love yourself. Don't ever love anybody more than you love yourself. Okay. Now, if this is your first time here, do me a favor. Go down there. Please hit subscribe. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Tell a friend to subscribe. Come on, you guys. Come on, 4C gang. Can we get to 1K? You know, it's been, what, a couple of weeks now? We at 939. Can we get 61 more? Come on. We can do this. That's a challenge I'm putting out there. Please, y'all. Come on. Let's get to 1K. I, I am excited. Uh, my watch time is going up. Come on, y'all. Let's get to 1K. I want to go live with you guys. You know, I laugh and joke about a lot of things. But that, let's do that. If y'all like this channel, y'all like me, the content and the crazy content and my shit talking I do, come on, help a brother out. Help a brother out. Share, 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 share this video. Share it to every platform you can. I know you probably can't share too motherfucking much because I cuss too goddamn much. But it is what I did. It is what it is. And I am who I am. Okay. Then leave me a comment, please. Leave me a comment. Tell me how you feel. Tell me if you shared it. Tell me who you shared this video to. Or tell me did you share this video. Then give me a thumbs up. Thumb up. Like this video. I like it. I like it. And then ring my bell. You can ring my bell. You can ring my bell anytime, any day. Ring it, ring it, ring it. Oh, you can ring this bell. You can ring my boss. Okay. I was reaching for that. That wasn't even funny. I see. That was just fucking. My mom would say, now that was just fucking just too much right there. Ring your balls. Oh, you want somebody to ring your balls? <laughs> oh, give it up for the ball ringer right here. Oh, he like his balls ring. Oh, I used to get so mad at my mama. You do some shit and she be talking to girl. Yeah, this little nigga right here. And then be telling your business now the next time you see them, you got to be all in bed. Oh, shit. Milk. It does the body good. All right, you guys. Thank you once again for enjoying my show. Join another episode of Cooking with Comedian Michael Allen, where we do cooking, comedy, cussing, and cocktail. Cooking, comedy, cussing, and cocktail. For Seagate for life. I love you, but I don't love you more than I love myself. All right, you guys. This is Comedian Michael Allen, and I'm out.